Welcome to another episode of Fellowship in Essential Oils. Liz, this week we're going to dive into lemongrass. I am, I'm so excited because I really, really love lemongrass essential oil. Yes. Now, before we dive into the oil, we must remind everyone that, remember, in these sessions we go through a lot, but there's even so much more that these essential oils have to offer. So make sure that you register for our monthly masterclass. Our next one is on October the 5th. And the link will be down below. So you definitely want to make sure because we're going to dive even deeper into lemongrass then. But what should we talk about lemongrass today? We often talk about which oils belong in the inner circle. And I think lemongrass would qualify in my inner circle. Would it qualify in yours? Um, It would in my emotional inner circle, but not necessarily in my physical. I don't use it that much for physical stuff, but emotional and mental. Yeah, definitely. But it does tend to have quite a lot of physical attributes to it, doesn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant. So um, the reason why I don't use it so much is because it's quite sharp on the skin. Um, Mm. And so you wouldn't want to put it in the bath. And as as everybody probably has grasped now, baths are my favourite thing in the world after cake. And so, so yeah, no, no lemongrass in the bath. But I use it as a hepatotonic. So for supporting the liver, if somebody's stressed and and that will be what I'll be talking about in the masterclass, how stress can affect the liver and how we can use essential oils to deal with that. But um, I think most people would use it for its antimicrobial uh, properties. So things like it's very good for for colds and flu, um, very good as an antifungal um lots of sort of antibacterial properties very good for keeping uh, bringing temperatures down although i'm a bit against using essential oils for temperatures um but all of those different things are really good ways to use lemongrass a couple of ways that i've found it to be really beneficial as well it's definitely not the lead oil that i'd kind of first reach for but if you're doing a blend or a combination or i've found layering of essential oils sometimes topically can be quite beneficial um, and a technique that was taught to me by um, a good friend of mine who's an aromatherapist in Australia, she actually had issues with walking and doctor said, you're never going to walk properly again. And she's like, oh, I'll show you. And she did. Um, and lemongrass played an important role in, in pain management for her in, in layering that, you know, along with things like copaiba and frankincense and wintergreen and so on. But lemon, lemongrass could have a bit of an um, analgesic effect, I believe, sometimes. Yeah, so um, anti-nociceptic effect, we would say. So, for example, it is anti-inflammatory, but one of the best ways that they, I say best, that's a terrible use of word, but the, the best ways to demonstrate that is to put a poor old mouse's foot onto a, um, a hot plate and then to see how inflamed it gets and how much pain. And lemongrass is very good at being able to stop that inflammatory process and to ease the pain. So bless his little heart, he can keep his foot on the plate longer. I mean, that that's just so it's just awful, isn't it? But, um, yeah. but yeah, so if somebody, so for example, if somebody has had um, an operation on their foot and they're starting to want to kind of walk on it again, then it's very good for kind of lifting that, that um pain barrier up a bit and this is kind of why i will talk about this in the spiritual side because i i think it's got a lot to do with how it affects the mindset um that that you can do that um but also i thought you were going to talk about something else then uh, um called quenching so quenching is like quite an advanced aromatherapy term but it's to do with how some chemical constituents can cancel out or neutralize bad effects of other constituents and so one of the the primary constituents in um in lemongrass essential oil is citral and citral can be really quite spiteful whereas limonene actually brings it down so blending lemongrass with lemon and orange can make it easier to use on the skin but i still wouldn't go so far as to put it in the bath we talked about how we were talking about um antifungal so particularly like um athlete's foot warts although lemon uh, on warts is better but lemongrass can be helpful for warts candida 
Um, but specifically, ma uh, uh, a fungus called Malassezia. So Malassezia is kind of a fungus that un underpins lots of different skin disorders like uh, contact dermatitis, uh, psoriasis, seborrheic dermatitis and dandruff. Um, so Dexter is a very healthy boy, but he has terrible seborrheic dermatitis on his head. It's almost as they've got old. It's like he's still got cradle cap vial mm. um and lemongrass in some olive oil really just like lifts it off and keeps it away for a while so it's very good for, for doing that and that's good for people who are, like are quite prone to dandruff and that kind of thing because it gets rid of the malassezia the malassezia for whatever way i don't know whether how it how it causes the dandruff but, but it does make it worse so we would want to use it in very small amounts because it is quite a, a dermal irritant it's um a lot of people who've got like very like i have hypersensitive skin will react to it so we use it in very small amounts and maximum dilution would be 0.7 percent of it mm. it's, uh, it's interesting i think people have been following through with the different episodes we kind of they're getting little bits of chemistry as we go along and the key constituents you know we've talked about little oil and things like lavender last week with clove we talked about eugenol we talked a lot about beta carotophylline with copa eba um, and citrol is one we haven't really got to yet. Um, citrol, good for detoxification of the body overall? You mentioned the liver before. Would it help with other parts of the body as well? don't know the answer to that without doing the study. Um, yeah. uh, uh, citrol is probably the, the reason why it's so good as an anti-nociceptic. It, it has mm. really strong pain-killing abilities. Um but we do know that um, lemongrass is detoxifying because it's used in Ayurveda, it is used in um, um, TCM. So, yes, definitely. But whether it's a citrol that does it, I couldn't say for sure. Got you. Now, the other place where lemongrass in my own life has been quite prominent is I remember it would have been about two and a half years ago, three years ago now, um, when I got my bloods done with the doctor, as I like to do once a year, and he's like, you're getting high in cholesterol. And I, th that became a little bit confusing for me because I, you know, I pretty much eat vegetarian and seafood. So I'm like, mm, I'm not really eating that kind of high cholesterol diet. Um, but I, you know, this is the interesting thing between doctors and naturopaths. The naturopath did explain to me that when our body is stressed and needs to produce uh, cortisol, it will release cholesterol in order to do that. So where doctors are trained, cholesterol is just diet. Naturopaths will kind of look at other things as well. But I started going, right, it's still high. I need to manage my stress, but what essential oils can I reach for for high cholesterol? And in a few different references, I was finding lemongrass to be um, one for high cholesterol. And it, I, I started using it on a regular basis. And I did, whether that was the actual thing that, you know, broke the camel's back or whether it was the combination of different things that I was doing at that time. But for high cholesterol, lemongrass was kind of kept on coming up. Um, so I didn't know that. The oil that I would use for cholesterol is rosemary. And as we all know, mm. I don't touch that lightly because I don't like the oil, but very good, very good for cholesterol. Yeah. So you did say, and, and I think we should probably emphasise this before, that lemongrass is definitely an oil that we need to make sure we're, especially if we're using it topically, high dilution, lots of dilution, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, or, or we'd say low dilution, actually. Low dilution, yeah. Ma yeah. Maximum, <laughs> maximum dilution is 0.7%. So normally, like if we were kind of being carefree about essential oils, then um, we would say most of them are like 3%. So it's quite significantly lower, and this is because of the risk of hypersensitivity. Um, mm. There are some other... Um, issues as well so if you've got damaged skin you wouldn't want to put it on your skin it's not an oil to be used on children under the age of two again because their their oils aren't properly formed on their arms properly and so therefore uh, they absorb differently and but it can really irritate their skin um it is rand and young talk about a theoretical um interaction with anti-diabetic diabetic meds and that is because it uses the same liver mechanism as the diabetic meds do. Um, and so therefore can change how fast the meds uh, metabolize. And I didn't say this. Sometimes I just go, oh, I, I can't see that. Um, you know, that that seems extreme. But 
I do actually think that's very that's accurate with um, lemon uh, lemongrass. It's so powerful on the liver. I if somebody came to me who had got a diabetes, I wouldn't use it. Yeah, I guess we should probably we we kind of sometimes assume that everyone knows who Tissarand and Young are. Should we d- so, kind of do you want to explain so, who they are? Well, so people are more likely to know who Robert Tissarand is than Rodney Young. So, yeah. um, but they are uh, Rodney Young is. I think I think he's a, his title is is a, a biochemist um, at a university, and he wrote um, a book with Robert Tisserand, who is kind of the key person that we refer to for essential oil safety. And uh, I haven't met him a few times. I know that he's quite the geek, and he's like surrounds himself with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of papers that talk about you know exactly where the interactions are are in the body and uh so he wrote well i I inherited a really old copy of essential oil safety but he wrote one in 2013 2014 it's called essential oil safety for health practitioners and it's a fantastic book but it's not like a it's not a reading reading book it's one that you go this is the oil what do i want to know um And but really interesting stuff about how the body uh, processes in pregnancy or, or what we don't know about how it processes in pregnancy, that kind of thing. So you're so I, I don't know. To me, it feels like he probably wrote the book for a person in a, a, a doctor in A&E for when somebody comes in and goes, I've, I've swallowed this bottle of oil what's the problems and so the A&E doctor goes straight away well it's going to do this that and the other but but I don't know but it is kind of like a, a set text within aromatherapy very much so now what one kind of darker thing that I know lemongrass is used for quite often is is obviously it comes from the beautiful grass that grows um and it's come from the leaves being high in citrol it has similar chemistry to lemon myrtle and is often used in diluting lemon myrtle or adulterating lemon myrtle um, so if you're buying your lemon myrtle, you know, if we're not talking about that oil today, but it sometimes can be actually updosed with lemongrass because it's a lot more inexpensive to uh, produce. I didn't know that, but that makes sense to me because they've got very similar um, similar uh, smell. Um, another thing that's dark, I don't know if you have got it on your news over there. I was watching CNN all day yesterday, What like, keeping my eye on the the all the florida uh, idalia and stuff and this one other story just kept looping looping round about this british woman who had had an eight centimeter worm taken out of her brain in australia did you see it i did see that on good old instagram yes <laughs> poor woman poor poor woman so she so she'd she'd suffered all sorts of things like breathing problems digestive problems mental health problems and eventually when they when they opened a brain up to biopsy there it was still wiggling so it was some kind of round worm now that is one of the key areas to use lemongrass essential oil um it has let me so the word is nematode anti nematocide is what the word i'm trying to say um and so it's very good antiparasitic so things like round worms in particular but tapeworms um and um you quite often see them in like uh japanese kinds of trials where they're looking at things that people have picked up from eating raw fish um mm. so very good for that um yeah. the other thing is and this is probably where my main area of research with lemongrass has been for i don't know the last four years is insect repellent and not just insect repellent, but people are going to get very excited now. Reptile repellent, specifically iguana repellent. And so it's really fascinating for somebody like me who's who's so interested in like animal plant communicate the uh, communications to see. So um, in sort of Asia, what they tend to do is to plant two crops together. So lemongrass but then citronella in between and the citronella is a weird crop because you can't eat it you can't do anything with it except to really make essential oil but also it's an amazing um insect repellent that's why it's there to keep everything off the crops 
But so the interesting thing about lemongrass is, as we know, the leaves are very tasty. And lizards and iguanas also think, mmm, lemongrass, very, very tasty. I mean, very, very, and then go, ah, because the smell, they really hate the smell. So as soon as they bite into it, lemon goes, and you go. <laughs> yeah. And it explodes it at them, and they run off, and they don't come back. So uh, so I think that's really fascinating. It's like they lure them in with the taste. Oh, look at my beautiful leaves. And then it, they just really hate the smell. So there we go. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, I, I must admit, I've never had to repel iguanas, but if I ever do, I think I'll remember that. Well, when I was first given the contract to do, I was like, had to do all sorts of different kinds of repellents. And I started off with like wasps and I was like, actually, I'm quite okay with doing wasps. And then it was like repelling aphids. And I was like, mm, am I okay with, re- mm, I don't know if I'm really happy about repelling aphids. And then we got on to lizards. And I was like, no, I'm really quite against the whole thing of repelling uh, uh, lizards. Until I saw them, these iguanas are huge and they eat everything in the garden. I was like, yeah, I, I think I'd be all right with that. If that came in my garden, I'd want rid of that. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, let us know in the comments if you've had to repel an iguana before and if lemongrass has worked for you. Yeah. Yep. I, I, yeah. If you take one thing away from the Yeah. And citronella. Yeah. Yep. Now, you said you use lemongrass not so much for the physical, but more for the emotional. And I'm really intrigued in um in that statement where would you lean for it in that avenue hope hope okay yeah so i mean it's a really sunny oil isn't it but um what i love about it is it's kind of so persuasive so if somebody's, I mean, we can talk about if somebody's really depressed, but this is like an extreme situation. And I would use it for somebody who's um, depressed. So I'm going to use an example of somebody I know. And, I, and if you're watching this, I'm sorry, I'm not going to use your name. But so they went so, so far down into depression. Whatever I said, why don't we try that? Why don't we try that? Why don't we try that? There was always like, no, because there was like an excuse and a reason and a war. Mm. And it wasn't like, you know, stop making excuses because you're making them up. It was like their chemistry was just, there was a war. What lemongrass does goes, yeah, I know about the fact you've got no money. I know you've got no job. I know that you've got no friends. I know all of those things. But you know what? What if you could do it? What if you could? And it's like, it can get you across any single barrier, I think. It's like this person, and, and going back to that person when I was saying standing on that foot, um, you know, the, the, when you're in that much pain, you make excuses that you don't want to walk on it. You want you don't want to do the physio. Whereas lemon uh, lemon uh, grass, I keep going, going to say lemon balm, sorry. Lemon grass um, says, I know. But what if what if you could take that extra step today? Or and if you could take that extra step, what, what difference is that gonna make over a period of time? So so good if somebody's depressed, but if somebody is making excuses. So um like if a kid can't do the homework or you know, and they've just become so demoralized that the their own thought processes are really scuppering them, then lemongrass is absolutely fantastic. Mm. And I often find, you know, any of the lemon-scented oils, and there is quite a large variety of them from a whole range of different plants, they all do help. They're kind of like the light bringers of the essential oil world. There's something about a lemon scent that brings more light. And I often refer to, you know, how I think about lemongrass, especially on an emotional level, is, you know, you think of the plant and it's a blade of grass. So it's like a sword. And I often call lemongrass my sword of light. So I find it a really beautiful one for helping to cut away, you know, cut away the, the negativity, the, the doubt, the pessimism, but also helping to um, cut away confusion. And I find it's a really great one for mental focus as well. You know, a lot of people know what they don't want in life but they're not too sure what they do want in life. And I think lemongrass is a really good one for cutting all that and being really quite clear of like, that's where I'm heading and get getting rid of all that negativity out of our lives. I think it's a really great, I, I don't know if I'd use it for a space cleanser, but more for like a life cleanser of get, 
when we have clarity, we know where we're heading. And so it can actually help with manifesting the life we want. Yeah, and actually, so I was going to, two very disparate points now. So these do not marry Mm -hmm. up at all, sorry. But so the first thing to say is people will be expecting me to say this, that it affects, it, it attracts swarms of bees. So like uh, lemon lemon balm, it's much cheaper than using Melissa. And of course, we say that the, the bee is the bringer of abundance and a bringer of honey. So using it in that space, you definitely will bring it in. But also, disparate, completely not unrelated. Um, I use it myself when the creativity stops. So if I have like a writer's block or... I, I don't even know if it has like a, a name, but just when you kind of have written yourself into a dead end and you think, I, 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 that's not what I wanted to say and now I can't come back from it and, uh, and it gets overwhelming and you think I'm going to throw the thing in the, ba- the bin, you know, all of that stuff. But lemon Lemongrass is really good for going, yeah, I know, but we can do this, we can do this. Um, and you do yeah. get more inspired thoughts, I think. Very much so. Maybe it's called a writer's cul-de-sac. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make up our own terms. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Now, now, I did warn that I was going to kind of go off on, on a bit of a tangent with when it came to chakras and lemongrass because I tend to be a bit of a like, right, I think that oil goes with that chakra a lot. Lemongrass is one where I do kind of um, find it works with several different chakras. So the first one I find really, really great for, the third eye chakra. Because of that clarity, um, you know, a lot of the negative emotion that's often associated with disrupting the um, the third eye chakra is doubt or disbelief and all that kind of negative thought. And I also like to remind people with the third eye chakra, a lot of people are like, oh, it's all to do with the intuition. And I like to expand on that and say, well, it's the intuition, but it's also the intellect. And I find the key word for the third eye chakra for me is understanding. It allows us to work out what we're inspired to do from our crown chakra and then go, how do I use my intuition and my intellect to understand how the world works and to bring that into manifestation? What what do I need to do? So when we start to doubt ourselves, when we uh, have that disbelief, when we've, the things that Liz and I have been referring to about that kind of can't go on, this is where lemongrass c- comes in and, and kind of like a sword, cut through all the fogginess and all the confusion. So it can be really great for that one. Now, probably the premier chakra that I would I love it for is for the solar plexus chakra. Now, a lot of times when people talk about chakras, they talk about an energy center being open or closed. And, you know, we often, they're obviously depicted sometimes as flowers and we have these visuals. And I like to kind of shake up those terms a little bit because when we woke up this morning, was our energy open or closed? Or maybe we had low energy or we have high energy at different points. It goes up and down. And I think of these energy centers as either being, like on an imaginary scale, say one to 100, you might have low energy in a chakra, and that's like a zero. You might have high at 100, and what we ideally want is a 50. Now, for lemongrass, I find it really good for an overactive solar plexus chakra. So traits will be different. We know that the solar plexus chakra is about, it's like our inner sunshine and how confident and social we feel when it's underactive. If we feel inferior, we feel antisocial, but what can happen is with too much energy, we can become a bit a bossy, we can become domineering. Um, perfectionism can come in there as well because there's that I have to do everything or like a workaholic, I have to do everything because no one else can do it as good as me. And this is where lemongrass can come in on that um, on that level to kind of slight, kind of cut people down to level and clear away excesses of energy and i guess that theme of kind of detoxification kind of comes in with there so any kind of power struggles i find this one can be really grateful for as well the third chakra is a bit of a lesser known chakra and since the 1970s and kind of the emergence of the new age people have been starting to sense um, more subtle energies outside the body and we kind of find discussions of chakras above our head and below our feet um, probably the most common ones are the soul star chakra and the earth star chakra. Now, below the earth star chakra, some people have identified another chakra known as the incarnator chakra. And what this chakra does is it connects you to your ancestry, your clan, your your tribe. And you may find that even in this lifetime, you know, you may have been born in France, 
but sometimes you're just really drawn to maybe Native American culture or you've got this real drawing to Egypt, but you've got nothing in your direct ancestry. And the incarnated chakra can sometimes take you into that understanding of, well, maybe my soul's got other other um, influences in it. And lemongrass is an oil that's actually been renowned. Again, that sort of light kind of going through the darkness, often the colour black is associated with the incarnated chakra, that's going through the pages of history and helping you go through past lives. So lemongrass in the idea of past lives, not so much for the healing, but for the aspect of belonging could be quite uh, um, worth trying and playing out with as well. So I actually give it to three chakras, which is very, very on me. That's fascinating. I've never heard of that chakra. And I wonder wonder where Greece sits with me. That would be interesting to see, wouldn't it? But I, I absolutely agree about the other two. And the interesting thing is, if we look at the tongue of the trees, Yep. Uh, self realization exactly what you what uh, what you were saying um and this idea of i mean it, it's all kind of ways of different manifestation isn't it you know intuition and intellect that 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 balance is all about being able to project forward isn't it and mm. and also like we can say that intellect is logic so if you're not careful as well you know chemistry can really affect your sense of logic and, you know, somebody who has got depression, like we were talking about before, it's not logical that you can overcome it. So you do have to to be able to to kind of suspend belief to be able to do that stuff. So I think that that's absolutely correct what you said. Mm. So, yeah, I, I find overall this this to be a really great oil for helping. The, I guess we've got a, the theme that we seem to have come up with as we've been discussing is when you're feeling a bit lost or or hope, like you said, hope, lack of hope, hopeless. Um, this is a really great oil to kind of cut away that confusion or that fogginess in that way to help us find our way, whether it be clarity of the mind, feeling empowered, um, or even feeling over empowered, um, or even a sense of belonging and and, and your greater mission on what you're here to do, um, maybe over several lifetimes as well. I love that. Yeah. So that's our lemongrass, really. As you know, we, as we said, we'll go through a bit more in our masterclass, and the link is down below. So make sure you subscribe to that. Um, planet with with lemongrass. Yeah, I don't know, but I'm going to say Jupiter. I think just for this idea of like the the elevation up to a greater hope. Mm, okay, I, I tend to lean into Mercury for this one, just for that more clarity of the mind. I find it that. that that's where it's really reigned king in my life is that way as well. Yeah. Anything else you would you would say about lemongrass? Or do you think we've ticked all the boxes today? Well, I've got lots and lots to say about how to use it for stress and supporting the liver, but I am going to save that for the masterclass. So make sure you get your tickets to the masterclass. And there is a discount code down there if you read properly as well. So um, because you're a supporter, we want you to make sure that you, you know, get a little bit off as well. We will see you next week when we dive into a very different oil, but um, one I love very much. We're going to explore jasmine, aren't we? My favourite. Until then, look after yourself, look after each other, and, of course, look after Mother Earth because she's the one who gifts us these essential oils. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.